the book of Proverbs part 4. We're going to be picking it up today here in Proverbs chapter 13, having just finished up Proverbs chapter 12. And we're going to be continuing with these words of wisdom from the wisest of all, Solomon. In other words, King Solomon of Israel. We're going to be hearing his advice, not only to uh, the next generation, but the generations to come, even to our time. We're going to hear some uh, phrases or scriptures in this particular upcoming chapter, which seem to contrast each other, but when you rightly divide our Father's word then they make perfect sense. You have to be careful whenever you're reading our Father's Word that you understand the subject and object of what is being discussed even in each uh, line of Scripture. So again, we're going to pick it up in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 1. And before we begin, as always, as you should always do before you study our Father's Word, let us go to our Father. Let us seek wisdom and knowledge from him, for he is the only one capable of opening our eyes and ears to the truth. So let us go before his throne and ask of him these things in prayer. Let us pray. Our glorious Heavenly Father, King of all that is, all that ever was and all that ever will be. We come before you this day, Father, asking for wisdom and guidance, asking for knowledge, as did Solomon. We ask that you open our eyes and ears, Father, and our hearts and minds to be able to receive this truth, as well as all those who study with us. We ask that you lead us down that narrow path to truth, Father, that you be our guiding light so that we do not stumble and fall. We know that you know the hearts and minds of everyone that's listening to this or studying your word. Therefore, we ask that you dole out your wisdom according to each man's intentions and designs upon learning your word and seeking your face and counsel. We ask that your hands always be upon these studies, Father, that you always be our guide, so that we speak nothing amiss, so that we convey the message as you would have it conveyed, that it may be pleasing to your will, and that we lead no one astray, but rather only closer to you. And we ask these things, Father, in the name of our Lord, our Savior, our Intercessor, our Healer, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, Amen. So Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 1. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. In other words, a scorner will not accept correction. Rather, when you rebuke them when they've done something wrong, they will argue with you that they are in the right. And again, you've got the twofold connotation here. A wise son heareth his father's instruction. Again, though this word father is not capitalized as meaning God, it does have the connotation. Because we are the sons of God in the flesh. In other words, sons of men as we dwell in this flesh. But we are God's children. And a wise son will heed his father's instruction. And how do you do that? You study this word diligently. Verse 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. In other words, this is not really talking so much about eating. A man shall be blessed by the fruit of his mouth. In other words, that which he speaks. But the soul of transgressors shall eat violence. Why? Because they're transgressing the law. And their end shall be violence save they turn and repent and come to the Father through Christ. Verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. 
In other words, he that watch what he says or uh, is very careful and discreet about what he says, uh, even with regards to spreading the gospel or planting seeds with people, will keep his life. Especially if uh, that which he keeps in his mouth is the truth of our Father's word. But he that openeth his lips wide shall have destruction. In other words, a, 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 a jaw flapper. One that runs off at the mouth. Doesn't really know anything, but runs off at the mouth as though he was a professor and had such wisdom to it's just unfathomable. You know, a lot of politicians, a lot of lawyers love to play this game. They will speak great things. And uh, the blissfully unaware masses will say, you know, that is so true. That is so correct. He's fighting for us. When really what they're doing is setting a snare before you to pull you in and to uh, win your vote to put more of their kind into office. And once they have enough of their kind in office, guess what? They have the power. That's not the way this government was designed. This government was designed to be for the people, not for the government. Verse 4. The soul of the sluggard desireth, and hath nothing. In other words, the soul of a lazy person desires. They have desires for a lot of things, but they have nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. In other words, the soul that gets out there and uh, is a mover and shaker shall be made fat. They're going to be made rich. Verse 5. A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. In other words, the, the righteous hate a liar. But the wicked man is loathsome, especially when he's called a liar, even when he is lying. And he is going to come to shame. You know, that's the thing about shame and about uh, judgment and about um, vengeance, is it doesn't come automatically. If lightning were to strike people... Uh, every time they did something wrong, then you'd have a world full of righteous people. But it doesn't happen that way. It's God who tries the reins of the heart and the mind. And our Father will allow you to get out there and run your mouth all you want to. You know, that you've got free will. But life is short, and you're going to stand before His judgment in the end. Even those who don't believe in our Father. Verse 6. Righteous, or righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. In other words, righteousness keeps you out of trouble. It keeps you upright. It keeps you in the way of life. But wickedness overthrows the sinner. What does it mean to be overthrown? It means to be uh, taken out of power, thrown down. Cast down. Verse 7. Re remember what it, what it was that caused Satan to be cast down. Verse 7. He that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. Or, excuse me. There is he that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. In other words, he may be rich in the ways of the world, but what has he got spiritually? Nothing. There is he that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. The word poor here can be translated meek. In other words, the one that makes himself poor does not worship the riches of this world. Yet he hath great riches. Great riches of what? Great riches of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, righteousness, judgment, justice. And of course, the riches that he lays up for himself in our Father's kingdom. Verse 8, the ransom of a man's life are his riches, and that can be a positive or a negative. But the poor heareth not rebuke. This is not the same poor that made himself poor. In other words, in the last 
uh, scripture, verse 7, there is he that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. Uh, think about our government. And there is he that makes himself poor. You'll notice it said makes himself poor. It's it, not that he's made poor by his government or by those in power. Yet he hath great riches. And again, verse 8. The ransom of a man's life are his riches. You know, that can be a positive ransom or a negative ransom, depending. Depending on how you come about your riches. But the riches that you want may make you poor in life. But if they make you rich in our Father's kingdom, hey, which would you rather have? Riches for eternity or riches for this short time you dwell in the flesh? But the poor heareth not rebuke. In other words, the uh, poor as in uh, they have no riches. They, ha they have not stored up any treasures in our Father's kingdom. Verse 9. The light of righteous uh, of the righteous rejoiceth, and the lamp of the wicked shall be put out, snuffed out even. Like pinching a candle or putting a uh, snuffer on top of it. In other words, they're going to come to an end. Verse 10. Only by pride cometh contention, but the well-advised is wisdom, or with the well-advised is wisdom. In other words, people will argue things over their pride. If you don't think so, go, go and look at some of the comments on my Lost Tribes of Israel video. Got a lot of prideful people who put their pride before the facts, before the truth, before uh, 26 years of study on this subject. And they come in and they don't want to believe the truth or they don't want to believe uh, or, or look for themselves. So they automatically assume you're wrong because it doesn't fit well with what they want to believe, what they've been told from their pulpit or what they have agreed to with their friends. Yet the facts are still the facts. Verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. In other words, wealth gotten by emptiness shall be diminished. Ever wonder why a lot of churches fail? Ever wonder why taxes are going up in this uh, nation, yet uh, the nation is diminishing? Wealth gotten by vanity, which is to say emptiness, shall be diminished. They take in more taxes from us than they ever have, and there's more of a population to be taxed now than they ever have, and yet we're in bigger debt than we've ever been. That ought to tell you something is wrong. But he that gathereth by labor shall increase. In other words, he that gets out and works shall increase. There's a twofold connotation here. Uh, there, there's the fleshly level, but I chose to teach on the spiritual level. However, if you want to take it to the fleshly level, uh, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. In other words, people can win the lottery or um, have money given to them. It, they inherit it from a rich ancestor or uh, a rich family member. And usually what happens? Within a five-year period of time, some of them are poor and broke because they're not wise. They go out and buy themselves every little thing their heart desires and don't lay up any money for their future. Verse 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. In other words, hope turned away makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. In other words, when the desire of hope cometh, it is a tree of life. And there we have the tree of life analogy again. You know, the tree of life is symbolic <coughs> excuse me, of Christ. And that is the fruit that you want to partake of. You do not want to partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For that is Satan. In other words, there were two trees in the garden. 
actually there were many trees, but uh, there were two in the midst of the garden. And one was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, Satan has known good. He once was good. He was Lucifer, the son of the morning, the uh, bright star, until he fell in pride. And then there was the tree of life. In other words, if you partake of the fruit of the tree of life, you live forever. Well, there's that's, that's a Hebrew analogy, a Hebraism. And we know that Jesus Christ has been since the beginning. Maybe not in his flesh body as Yahshua, that is to say Jesus Christ, but he was with God from the beginning, as written in the book of John. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, what is the living Word? It's Christ. Christ and God being one and the same. Again, John 10.30, verse 13. Whoso despiseth the Word shall be destroyed. And you can take that down to the very Word that I was just talking about. If you despise our Lord and Savior... You're going to be destroyed. Why? Because you're not going to come to him. You're not going to get salvation. You're not going to get your sins forgiven. And you're going to be destroyed. First, uh, or, but he that heareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Or he that feareth, excuse me, he that feareth the commandment shall be uh, rewarded. He that regardeth the commandment shall be rewarded. What commandment are we talking about here? Well, what is the first and most important commandment? That you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy strength. That actually all his commandments, if you want to get right down to it. You just read, whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. That's not only the word uh, uh, as Christ, but also the word of God that you hold in your hands and read. But he that feareth or reverence the commandment, in other words, the commandments of God, shall be rewarded. Rewarded with what? A crown of life. Verse 14. The law of the wise is a fountain of life. To depart from the snares, that is to say the traps of death. And again, who is death? Or you could even look at this as the state of death. The death of the soul. It matters not. It, it, it all points to the same thing. You know, if you go after Satan, you're going after death, uh, the being, instead of the state, but you're going to end up in the state of death. So again, it, it, all roads lead to Rome as far as that goes. Verse 15. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressors is hard. In other words, it, it, it can complicate your life. It can make your life hard. You can do time. You can be. Uh, you can screw your life up with drugs or with whatever distraction that you put before our Lord. Verse sixteen. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but the fool layeth open his folly. In other words, he shows it to everyone. By by his um, by his ways, by what he does. Verse seventeen. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. You know this wicked messenger here uh, can have a number of connotations to it. It can be a liar. It can be one who teaches false doctrine. You know. Uh, uh, the word messenger is often associated with the word angel. And uh, who is the wicked angel? The wicked fallen archangel. Who's going to fall into mischief. In other words, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. He's got the brightness of his coming destroyed by the brightness of the coming of the true Christ. Verse 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. In other words, this poverty goes beyond this flesh. I mean, it does concern the flesh. 
If you don't receive instruction, you're probably going to live in poverty and shame. But we're looking also towards the um, eternity here. Again, you've got a lot of twofold connotations in these scriptures. And that is the supernatural power of our Father's Word. To speak two things at one time. No other book can do that. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. In other words, he that regards uh, instruction and correction shall be honored. Verse 19. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. In other words, that which you set out to do, once accomplished, is sweet to the soul. Why? Because you don't have to worry about it anymore. But it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. In other words, it's filth to them to depart from evil. They'd rather remain in evil. Verse 20. He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. Why? Because he's got them in company and they're going to counsel him. But the companion of fools shall be destroyed. You know... This is one of the reasons why out in Hollywood, all of the people agree together. That is to say, most of them. They rub shoulders with their own kind. In other words, the secular, the self-righteous, the haughty, so they can't see truth. They keep the company of fools, and their end shall probably be destroyed. Or probably be to be destroyed, that is to say. Verse 21. Evil pursueth sinners. But righteousness to the good or but to the righteous good shall be repaid. In other words, you may suffer in this life for being righteous, but you're going to be repaid for it. But evil always pursues sinners. Why? Because it wants them. Again, who is the evil one? An evil person spends their time contemplating evil. They spend their time looking for ways to screw their brother in over. They spend their time looking for ways to um, unjustly take what, what is not theirs. Verse 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. But the wealth of a sinner is laid up for the just. Now that sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. You know, we're not only talking about riches here or um, things of the earth. We're talking about uh, good advice, good upbringing. It's going to um, trickle down from generation to generation. But the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Why? Because it's going to be taken away from the sinner and given to the just. The reward they would have had is going to go to the just instead. Verse 23. Much food is in the tillage of the poor. But there is that that is destroyed for want of judgment. In other words, fair and righteous judgment. And you can look at this food as on the spiritual level. There is much spiritual food, which just to say puts meat on the bones of your spiritual body, in the tillage of the poor, the meek, the working. You know, when you take tillage means to, to till, to plow. Well, when you open this book and go through the pages of it, this Holy Bible, And you read the words of our Father, you are tilling in the Word. And you will abase yourself and be meek of spirit. In other words, you will be as Christ was. You won't go out there and say, hey, I'm number one, I'm it. Verse 24. He that spareth the rod hateth his son. In other words, he that does not correct his son with the rod... Hates his son. But he that uh, loveth him, chasteneth him betimes. In other words, many times. 
He chastises him many times with the rod of correction. And yes, that does infer the uh, using of the rod to beat upon the human body. Now you've got these Dr. Spock morons out there in the world that will say, teaching someone or correcting them or um, punishing them by hitting on them teaches them to be violent. And those are the words of the most colossal morons that ever lived. And that type has caused more of the violence in this world over the last 40 or 50 years that they've been uttering this trash because youth have been raised without correction. In other words, let's don't correct them, let's give them a time out. Boy, that's going to teach them a lesson. You know, the human body was designed with pain receptors so that you would know uh, it's for other reasons as well but you've got a lot of nerves on your hind end and on your back that uh, if the rod is put to it it will wake you up right real fast it's what you call an attention getter and <laughs> it's uh it does get your attention. And when you are chastened be times, in other words, over and over again, you will learn pretty quickly not to keep doing what you're doing that you're getting chastened for. Verse 25. The righteous eat to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. In other words, the righteous eat to the satisfying of his soul. Not his flesh, his soul. But the belly of the wicked shall want. We're not talking about your fleshly stomach here. We're talking about your spiritual stomach. The spiritual stomach of the wicked shall want. Want for what? Well, they're going to want for a number of things. They're going to want for knowledge. They're going to want for wisdom. They're going to want for judgment unless it's against them. Then they won't want for it. Then they'll cry foul. You know, how many people do you know that are in prison today that you could ask them uh, if they're guilty or if they deserve to be in prison? They'll say, no. It's just like a young child when they know that they're about to get paddled or uh, belt. Or, or or punished even with your hand or with uh, when I was growing up I, I had a choice of the belt or the switch and oftentimes I had to go pull the switch off the tree myself but uh, how many children do you suppose would um, say that they were glad that they were being uh, punished in such a way in other words, I think the answer to your question would probably be a big fat goose egg. In other words, uh, zero children would want to receive correction. In other words, to be punished. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house. In other words, woman is the nest builder, the keeper of the house. Now, this is not to say that a woman cannot have a career or uh, be a pillar of society or a successful businesswoman or what have you. This is simply talking about uh, things that were done in this time. And um, the house being established here is more than just a normal house. But the foolish plucketh it down with their hands. In other words, a foolish woman plucks her house down with her own hands. Why? Because she is foolish. She's not wise. A wise woman builds the house. The foolish woman plucks the house down. Again, how many uh, marriages come to nothing because of foolish people? On both sides of the uh, spectrum here of uh, the sexes. Verse 2. He that walketh in uprightness feareth the Lord. In other words, fears the Lord and has reverence for the Lord. But he that is perverse in his ways despises him. Despises God. 
Why? He won't obey his commandments. He won't receive correction from him. A lot of times they don't even believe in him. Verse 3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. In other words, not a rod of correction, a rod of pride. I am so prideful in myself. I, I am just it. Look at me, everybody. But the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Why? By the things they say, by the, the counsel that they give. Verse 4. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. In other words, the stable. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. In other words, you have to have oxen to be able to till your field so that you can uh, plow them, plant them, and bring in the increase to fill your barn. Verse 5. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. They'll happily utter lies. Remember what the scribes and Pharisees sought against Christ. Verse nine, uh, 6. A scorner seeketh wisdom, and findeth it not. In other words, in, in the first place, a scorner is someone that uh, doesn't believe, is not a believer. They're a mocker, a scorner. And they seek the wisdom of the earth, and, and they may find that, but they're not going to find any wisdom from God. They're not going to find any true wisdom, that is to say. But knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. And one of the things that makes it easy for him is asking our Father for it. And looking to our Father's word to find it. Verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. In other words, don't hang around with fools. All they're going to do is drag you down. They're going to try to pull you down to their level. A lot of times they'll be jealous of your knowledge and uh, their jealousy will cause them to say deceitful things about you or to try to drag you down to their level. Verse 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. And folly is correct. Deceit, again, can be lies, um, bearing false witness, anything that is deceitful, anything that is um, unjust, unrighteous. Verse 9. Fools make mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. In other words, uh, fools make mock at sin. In other words... Uh, when you tell them they're sinning, they make mock at you. They make mock at their own sins. In other words, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything that anybody else isn't doing. Verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. In other words, everyone's heart knows its own bitterness. And everyone, uh, in other words, when you're at peace, you know whether you're a sinner or whether you're a person who is uh, doing the best that you can. And a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. In other words, he doesn't... Um, He doesn't uh, do anything to stop his joy uh, in, in earthly things, in other words. In other words, he, he's not going to stop doing what he's doing just because it's wrong. Verse 11. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. What is the tabernacle of the upright? It's God. It's Christ. It's wisdom, it's knowledge that comes from God in Christ. Verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. 
In other words, we're talking about the flesh man here. It may seem right. You know, a lot of people try to justify themselves in what they do. Well, I had to steal that money. You know, I got this, I got this drug habit, and I, if I don't get my drugs, I, I'm going to kill somebody. So uh, it, it's better for me to steal from people than to go out and kill somebody. And this applies to many things. There's a lot of things which seem right unto man, such as to teach evolution instead of creation, or to say that uh, abortion should be legal, or to make laws which limit freedoms and cast God from among his people. But the end thereof are the ways of death. And again, who is death? You know, Satan is the most corrupt of all, and anyone that walks in his path, even if they're not a Satan worshiper, even if they simply uh, walk in his footsteps, oblivious to the fact of what they're doing, it still leads them to death. In other words, the death of their soul, even, in the end of things. Verse 13. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of mirth is heaviness. In other words, when you're one of these. You know, they may, they may laugh, but uh, even so, they're going to be filled with sorrow. And the end of their mirth is heaviness, depression, a, a lowly state of being. Verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Why? Because he's done right. But the backslider is going to be filled with his own ways. In other words, he's going to be have what he's done recompensed upon him. Again, uh, as you sow, so shall you reap. Verse 15. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. Uh, this would be a good sentence for those who study the Bible and those who attend church. In other words, the simple... The simple-minded believe every word. We're going to rapture away, brothers and sisters. You don't have to read the Bible. All you got to do is just believe and wait for them wings to, to count down to T-1 and then you take off. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. How do you look well to your going? Study your father's word. Make sure that you weigh and um, check out every word spoken. In other words, just don't believe every word just because it's said. You know, the quickest way for a lie to become a reality or to become what is considered the truth is to have it repeated over and over and over and over again. Then people begin to believe the lie. That's how many of these false doctrines sprung up in the first place. Verse 16, a wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. In other words, the, the, the fool does not depart from evil. Instead, he rages in it, and he's confident. He's boastful about it, proud of himself. Verse 17, he that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. Or that is to say, should be hated. Uh, now they're not hated. Men of wicked devices now hold office. They're elected office. They're uh, put into professorships. They're put into uh, the uh, seat of justice to judge from the uh, bench. Verse 18. The simple inherit folly. In other words, the simple-minded. But the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Again, where does all knowledge come from? From our Father. Verse 19. The evil bow before the good. And the wicked at the gates of righteousness. And that will happen at the end of this earth age. Every knee shall bow to the good. Every knee shall bow to Christ. Every knee shall bow before our Father. 
and the wicked at the gates of righteousness. They may not enter those gates, but they're going to be bowing before them. Verse 20. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor, but a rich man hath many friends. In other words, uh, the meek is hated even of his own neighbor. Uh, this, this goes down to... Uh, if you're not well off, if you're not uh, of the higher echelon or the elite, you're going to be looked down upon by your neighbor. But the rich man has many friends. You know why the rich man has many friends? Because he's got buckaroonies to spread around. Again, think of your politicians and how they uh, bribe people for votes. Socialism taking over our nation because of this. Because of freebies handed out. Just like a rich man who says, free beer for everybody. Boy, he's going to be well liked till the money runs out. Then they're not going to have any use for him. Verse 21. He that despises his neighbor sinneth. But he that has mercy on the poor, happy is he. You know, this is uh, what Christ would say. In so many words. Verse 22. Do they not err that devise evil? In other words, do they not make a big whopping mistake when they devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. Why? Because good comes from our Father. And things which are pleasing to the Father shall earn them truth and mercy. Verse 23. In all labor there is profit. In other words, if you get out and work, you will earn your way. But the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. In other words, it, it, it's only going to earn you pennies. It's, it's only going to make you uh, poor. Poverty. Verse 24. The crown of the wise is their riches. Uh, not only in this earth age, but in the next. But the foolishness of fools is folly. Simple statement and true. Verse 25. A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. And uh, as witnesses go... A true witness, in other words, one who speaks the truth, delivers souls. Why? Because he has the truth. But a deceitful witness, one who speaks lies or even false doctrines, is a liar. He's not going to deliver anybody. Matter of fact, he's probably going to lead them contrary, uh, away from God, and right to the feet of Satan. Verse 26. Verse 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. That fear is also reverence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Do you know what our place of refuge is? It's the rock of our salvation. It's being under the wings of that protecting eagle. In other words, our Father. Verse 27. The fear or reverence of the Lord is a fountain of life. To depart from the snares, the traps of death. Again, death, Satan. Death, eternal. Same, same uh, example. Verse 28. In the multitude of the people is the king's honor. But the want of the people is the destruction of the prince. In other words, in the multitude of the people, that is to say the king's dominion, is the king's honor. If a king is well thought of and is good to the people, then uh, he, he's going to uh, have honor among the people. But the want of the people is the destruction of the prince. Uh, the prince can be looked at as the king's son here, or it can be looked at as those in power. In other words, this is what I've tried to keep telling people over and over and over again. Those that keep you in a perpetual state of want so that they can pander to you for your votes by promising you things 
are leading to their own destruction. You know, they may be rich fat cats now and may be well off and drink the finest wine and eat the biggest steaks, but they have their consolation here. What consolation shall they have before the throne of our Father when they're standing naked before Him? Verse 29. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. In other words, he takes time to hear everything. He takes time to hear both sides. But he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. In other words, those who prejudge people without hearing all the facts. There's a, a few famous cases going on right now that... Uh, People have hastily judged. Uh, George Zimmerman, for one. You know, it, it's funny, and, and I really hate to go into this, but uh, this man, George Zimmerman, has been reviled by the media. He's been reviled by certain groups, such as the Black Caucus, the Black Panthers, the NAACP, and a whole bunch of people And they've prejudged him even without a trial. A lot of them are even calling for his death. And in so they're exalting folly. And the media is a willing partner in this because they show pictures of the shooting victim, that is to say Trayvon Martin, and they show pictures of him when he was 12. 13, 14. They show good pictures of him smiling. They show pictures of him in a football uniform when he was about 14 or 15. However, they don't show him as he looked at the time of his death, 17 years old, 6 foot 1, uh, muscle bound, tattooed, and uh, with a thuggish outlook. And I realize you cannot judge a pe people by their cover, but the media is keeping that cover from being seen at all. Instead, they're portraying him as just a little helpless youth who is picked on by this uh, half-Hispanic, uh, half-white person. In other words, they're hastily judging him. Well, are you hastily judging Trayvon? No. I intend to let the courts decide what is fair and what is right. Although the political pressure that has been put on them is probably not going to allow them to do so, and it's probably going to allow them to exalt folly. In other words, to see that justice is not done. That is a touchy subject that I probably should not have gone into, but, you know, the facts are the facts. If you're going to portray the pr truth, portray the whole truth. Don't portray only part of it and then expect to get justice. Because people seemingly now really don't care about justice. They're more concerned with political correctness. Verse 30, a sound heart is the life of the flesh, but the envy, or but, but envy is rottenness to the bones. In other words, it makes you weak. A sound heart, well, where do you get the sound heart from? From our Father, from His Word. Verse 31, he that oppresses the poor reproacheth his maker. In other words, he reproaches God. But he that honoreth him has mercy on the poor. In other words, he that honors God has mercy on the poor. Why? Because that was God's commandment. And again, this has to do with the real poor, not those who simply say, I am poor. And then drive off in their Acura legend, wearing enough gold chains around their neck to, uh, if they jumped into a swimming pool, they'd sink straight to the bottom and not be able to get back up. Verse 32. The, the wicked is driven away in wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. Hope of what? Salvation. Eternal life. The promises of our Father. 
Verse 33. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding. But that which is in the midst of fools is made known. In other words, it's revealed. A fool will reveal itself sooner or later. He'll show you that he's a fool. Verse 34. Righteousness exalt a nation. Not turning your back on God, who is righteous. It's righteousness that exalts a nation. Well, what kind of righteousness? The kind of righteousness that is fair to everyone and doesn't treat one people above another because of race or because of their status as a voting demographic or because they call themselves poor. Righteousness exalts a nation. Well, that which is for God is righteous. That which is against God is not righteous. But sin reproacheth it, reproach to any people. Is a reproach to any people. Is it not sinful to cast God out of everything? Is it not sinful to remove the Ten Commandments from many government buildings where supposedly justice is carried out? The courthouses, when the uh, laws that we go by came from those Ten Commandments? Verse 35. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causes shame. Now that's a, a, a simple saying, and its fleshly connotation you should already be able to see. But... Uh, Think of the king here, even though it's not capitalized, is who is the king of king and lord of lords? The king's favor, in other words, Jesus Christ's favor, is towards a wise servant. In other words, one like himself. When Christ came into the flesh, he was the servant, even washing the feet of his disciples. But his wrath is against them that cause us shame. You know, pretty simple... Pretty cut and dry. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. In other words, a soft answer is a comforting answer, a, an answer with wisdom, whereas grievous words stir up anger. And this applies to many situations. Verse 2. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. In other words, in the correct way. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding good, or beholding the evil and the good. In other words, God sees it all. Verse 4. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life. In other words, it is full of the fruit of the tree of life and leads to life, life eternal. But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. In other words, it's a, uh, a void, a, a break, a split in the spirit, a rent. Verse 5. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In other words, he's wise. Verse 6. In the house uh, in the house of the righteousness, excuse me, in the house of the righteous is much treasure, but the revenues of the wicked is trouble. In other words, their payment is going to be trouble. That which they earn. Verse 7. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish does not so. In other words, it uh, brings folly. Verse 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Remember Cain's sacrifice and why it wasn't accepted? Because he kept the best for himself. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. Verse 9. The way of the wicked is abomination to the Lord. But he loveth him that follow after righteousness. Verse 10. Correction is grievous under him that forsaketh the way. What way? God's way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. 
In other words, he that hates to be corrected shall die. Verse 11. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more then the hearts of the children of men? In other words, if God sees hell and destruction in his infinite wisdom, how much more the uh, hearts of men which dwell in the flesh? Verse 12. A scorner loveth not one to reprove him, in other words, to correct him, to show him anything. Neither will he go in unto the wise. In other words, he won't even go ask. Verse 13. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. By the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. And that's true. Verse 14, the heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. They, they can't get enough of it. Verse 15, all the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. In other words, God will see to it. That he's continually well fed, well instructed. We're talking spiritual here as well as fleshly. Verse 16. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. In other words, it's better that you be poor and love God than to have great treasures or great riches and have trouble therewith. Verse 17. Better is dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox were hatred therewith. In other words, better is a, a, a salad than a uh, steak of an ox where there's hatred. In other words, because love is with the salad. Verse 18. A wrathful man stirreth up trife. In other words, he makes trouble. But he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. In other words, he calms it down. He brings reason. He's the voice of reason against the howling crowd. Verse 19. The way of the slothful man is an hedge of thorns. In other words, he, he can't get out because it's a hedge of thorns. But the way of, right, of the righteous is made plain. In other words, the opening is made plain. Verse 20. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Again, we've covered this and this analogy. Verse 21. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. In other words, they enjoy being ignorant to truth. But a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Uprightly in the Lord. Verse 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. In other words, without wisdom, without good guidance, purposes are disappointed. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it be something you plan out or something you plan to build. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. In other words, in the multitude of wise men, wise counselors, go ask them. Go ask the experts. Verse 23. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season, how good it is, or how good is it? In other words, spoken at the right time. A word spoken at the right time, how, how good is it? Verse 24. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. In other words, to be raised up. And I don't mean raptured, I mean... To escape hell through the truth, through wisdom, through knowledge, verse 25. Through love of our Father, through Christ, verse 25. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. Again, who's the proudest of all? Satan. But he will establish the border of the widow. In other words, he's going to take care of the widow. And the widow has a deeper connotation, but I choose not to go into it right now. Verse 26. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. They're filth to the Lord. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. 
Pure of what? Pure of heart. Pure of mind. Pure in righteousness. Verse 27. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. But he that hateth gifts shall live. In other words, he that hates bribes shall live. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. Why? He, he takes a bribe. Or he withholds this treasure from those who need it. Verse 28. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. In other words, to be able to answer. What did they study to be able to answer? The word of our Father. But the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. In other words, they'll just answer anything. Pouring out evil. You ain't got to worry about it. We're going to fly away. Verse 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. Verse 30. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. In other words, to be well spoken of amongst men, because you're a good person, a pillar of society, a wise man, makes the bones fat. It builds you up, makes you strong. Verse 31. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. No explanation needed. Verse 32. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. In other words, he that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul because it's to the detriment of his own soul. He loses his eternal life. Verse 33 to complete the chapter and the study. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. Remember when Christ came in the flesh, he came as the servant. When he returns, he will be returning as king of kings. In honor, in kingdom and dominion. At any rate, uh, this is where we're going to end this particular Bible study for this session. And uh, we will pick this up in uh, Proverbs chapter 16 when we come back. And uh, as always, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ, it is my prayer for you that you will study our Father's Word to show yourself approved. If at all possible, get into the languages so that you can understand. Learn the manners of speech. But above all, pray to our Father for guidance and wisdom when you study His Word. Before you study His Word. And may our Father bless you in every good work. May He pour out abundantly to you, that you may pour out abundantly to others. And bring them into the living word. Bring them into the truth. And may God bless you and thank you for listening. This has been Just Thoughts.